Hi, Dean at Bramley Glade Books here. Uh, I just wanted to make a quick video talking about what I'm doing at the moment uh, with regards to rebinding. Uh, so I've recently got interested in um, binding and rebinding books. And um, what I'm quite keen to do is to do a few rebinds of my own books um, that were published about 15 years ago. Um, the first being The Hand of the Devil and the second being Hunting Season, both in hardback. And um, um, I've had copies of these obviously hanging around on bookshelves for quite some time. Um, but recently I've, um, I've been interested in just... Uh, no, it sounds brutal, but uh, taking them apart, taking the covers off. Um, Hand of the Devil, for example, has a sort of plain black uh, cloth, cloth uh, case binding, and then red, red end papers. So quite simple, probably to keep costs down. Um, and um, I just want to choose, just take three, take the text blocks out, and then choose some different end papers and different cloth bindings. Um, start off with a basic one, and then move progressively more elaborate. Um, luxurious, I suppose you could say, uh, as we go up. So the second one, the one in between, will be uh, even nicer looking, and then the third one will be exceptional, hopefully. I've kind of been influenced by um, uh, the Suntup editions. They tend to release three different editions of a book. They have the Artist Gift Edition, which is looks like a standard hardback with a, um, a dust jacket. And then they do... Uh, the nice uh, numbered edition, and then a really, really nice letter edition. Very expensive, uh, very limited run, but very, very desirable. Um, so these are just for me, they're not to sell. They're my own book, but I just thought it'd be fun to rebind them uh, and see what materials are out there and what sort of, uh, how sort of different I could make the three editions. I might do, um, I might do, uh, slip cases for one or two of them and then for the deluxe one the third one I might try and do a um, a solander box or a clamshell box and I've actually got an idea for another item to go into that box along with a copy of the book to make it a really nice set and as I say it's just something I thought I would do for my own books uh, if it goes wrong <laughs> it's not the end of the world I've got a few copies of each um, and I've got a couple of quite old battered copies that I can practice with just to get the dimensions right, uh, just to get the process right. Rebinding, I've found um, it's it's only part of the book bind the book binding process. So you know the actual pages, uh, getting them uh, folded and cut and then sewn together. Don't need to do any of that because it's already done. Um, it's just basically attaching a new cover. Uh, apart from watching a lot of videos and getting some books on uh, bookbinding, I um, thought I would get a couple of hardbacks from eBay and uh, take them apart and just practice rebinding them. So the first one uh, is Criss Cross by James Patterson, which I haven't read, probably never will. Uh, not a James Patterson fan, then saying that I haven't read anything of his, so <laughs> it's kind of a... kind of doesn't make a lot of sense, but... Um, um, there were uh, three hardbacks, three James Patterson hardbacks on eBay uh, for only a few pounds, so I thought I'd just buy those and then, you know, just take them apart, use them as practice books. So this is the uh, first rebind I've done. Um, it's a partial success. And I'll go into why it's a partial <laughs> success in a minute. Uh, because it's also partially a failure. Um, although, technically, it is a rebind. It's a working book. You know, you can, you can open it out. You know, if you want, you can just about lay it flat, I think, without it coming apart. It does start to creak quite a bit as it gets flat, so that's probably an issue we need to look at. But, you know, it's, it's a hardback book. It works. So, what went wrong is... Very small, but there is a bit of paste that I managed to get on the cloth on the front. Well, that's a blemish. Uh, 
not a big deal, but um, it's annoying. Uh, also with the pasting, um, what I should have done is put um, non-stick paper between uh, the inside of the cover here and uh, the end paper because they stuck together. You can see there's a bit of paste there, so I sort of carefully tear them apart. And also some paste managed to get on the first page. And uh, yeah, you can see a bit of the end paper stuck to it. And also, the way I pasted the end paper to the text block here, it's kind of too far in. So if you're trying to pull the end paper back like that, it's pulling the first page. There should be a lot more give there. I mean, it's, you do notice a bit in books. No, it's not quite flat, but uh, that's that's just too much. And I have to sort of tear it apart. Try and get it the way I wanted it. So pasting's a big issue there that I need to fix. Uh, the back, again, there was a bit of paste there, so the end paper and papers were stuck together. Uh, also, turning the cloth over and st sticking, pasting the cloth to the board. Okay, in most places, but you can see, you can see on the camera, but along the top line, it's not perfectly flat where I folded it over, and you can also see a bit of the board there. So I haven't covered the board properly with the cloth. I should have paid a bit more attention folding over. Uh, that could have been partly because I knew it was a practice and I wasn't that fussed and I knew it wasn't going to be right, but um, but definitely something I need to concentrate on going forward uh, just to make it a lot neater. Not a very nice end paper, this one, the blue, um, but I just I just I just chose any old color. I didn't, it didn't have to look great. I was just choosing any sort of color that I had. The end paper. Uh, also, you normally get decorative headbands at the top. They can either be stitched into the uh, hand stitched into the text block, although with mass market paper, uh, mass market hard covers like this, it's normally just a bit that's cut out. Headbands already made, just cut out a strip of it and stick it to the top. It's normally alternating colours, like a sort of stripy pattern. Normally one on the on the bottom. I knew that um, I deliberately left that out because uh, I wasn't that fussed about using up headbands on a practice one like this. So. Yeah, so I know that the headband, I know that I missed out the headband, I'm not fussed about that. Um, generally though, I think it came out quite well. It was in a press, I actually made uh, a book press. Um, there's a YouTube channel called Sea Lemon, and um, uh, there was a video on how to make a homemade book press out of uh, chopping boards. So I made that, and it worked really well, it allows you to put good amount of pressure on it, keep it flat, and I kept it for 48 hours, I think. And um, what you don't want is for these boards to curve outwards, like that. Um, and they did, actually. When I, um, when I put the, uh, the cloth on the boards, first step, uh, they were curving outwards, but I saw in another video that when you put the end papers on the inside, it kind of corrects that bend and straightens out the board. And then you compress it after you've pasted the uh, text block in and it'll, it should sort itself out. And ideally, you should have the boards slightly curving inwards, which these are, so I'm pretty happy about that. You can see the sort of slight curve outwards, very, very slight. It just keeps the boards um, closing in on the text block. Um, it's a really nice feel. This is quite a basic red cloth. I really like the feel of it. Uh, I definitely think books are better without dust jackets. Normally when I read a book I just take the just dust jacket off and put it in a, in a drawer anyway, until I finish reading it. Um, yeah, that, that's a tricky bit. Where, where it's glued in here, this sort of... Um, Sort of trench here. You've got to be really careful. When I when I pasted it, I did one side, came to the other side, and then found that it was pulling this side as back again. So I had to redo that. And I was a bit worried that when it all dried out, it might not work properly. But it's it's fine. So yeah, that's the first attempt. I'm pretty happy with it. The next step is to uh, 
Uh, I've got a quite an old, this one's okay, but I've got quite an old battered version of the Hand of the Devil that I'm going to take apart. Uh, measure out everything, measure out the boards, uh, the spine. Create some templates so that I can use that for, um, for future rebinds. And then, yeah, basically rebind this. Um, and then also, once I've got those templates for the covers, I'm going to mock up some some covers using various different materials just to see what they look like. Um, once I've got the bare text block, I can put the sample covers around it and then just basically find out, basically decide which ones I like best. Uh, so I can choose covers for the final three versions uh, and then take it from there. So uh, we'll see how I go with it and um, I'll keep you updated in a future video so you can see how I'm getting on. And uh, hopefully it'll all go well. Won't be a complete disaster. <laughs> so see you soon. Thank you for watching.